Let me just start by saying that I was less afraid throwing myself in the mighty Southern Ocean that I was preparing for this talk and coming up on this stage. A race, a sailing race I took part in from London to Sydney, Australia is the reason why I'm here today. 18,000 nautical miles covered in a stripped down racing yacht. What that means is that this yacht has no luxuries whatsoever. Perhaps more striking that the thousands of miles covered in less than five months is the fact that I was almost a complete novice sailor when I took the decision to join this race. Half my crew had never been on a boat before, and the other half were just amateurs. Brave or mad, that's up to you to decide. But this was an experience that has changed my life perspective forever, has changed me as a person, and when I lost all the luxuries of the modern world, I found myself again. Of course, one cannot just sign up like that. You, you do have to go through an intense training program, but the four weeks of training will prepare us just for the bare basics. Initially, it was just the shock of the overwhelming sailing terminology. Why on earth does every rope need a different name? Gradually, um, we start getting a bit more life-for-life -life experience of what it would be like to race and live on board for so many months. The team would split in two, and while half of us would be sleeping, the other half would be on deck racing the boat. Two people out of us would be put in what is called a mother duty for 24 hours, and of course we would rotate. Their responsibility would be to prepare meals for 20 people three times a day. Now, this is a task on its own, on an everyday situation. Can you imagine what it's like when the boat is healing at 45 degrees angle, like that? And when it's slamming against the waves with a force that sometimes feels like hitting a wall? I can assure you it was a nightmare, and we did have a few explosions in the kitchen for that matter. We would learn to sleep and wake up every three to four hours, and it will be the first time for most of us to have to deal with seasickness. Now, seasickness can be debilitating, especially for the novice sailor, and it was an obstacle throughout the whole race, not just in training. I am a person that gets motion sickness while sitting at the back of a car. How would I cope with this? We very quickly realized the two stages of seasickness. One, you think you're going to die. Two, you wish you had. Couple more weeks of training and we were almost ready to go. A day before departure, I found myself standing in the middle of St. Catherine's Docks in London, contemplating at the adventure I was about to embark on. I kept wondering, what would it feel like having no land in sight, knowing that you're so far away from it in every direction? Would I be scared? What if something happened to us? There wouldn't be an escort following us. No helicopter would be able to reach us. Nearest ships could take days to get to us, and ports could be weeks away. When we would be in the Southern Ocean, we would be so far away from land that literally the people nearest to us would be the astronauts manning the International Space Station. We would have to deal with any incidents on our own. Once a teammate of mine got injured while up the mast. He broke his wrist and he lacerated his armpit. My skipper and I had to place 17 stitches on him and set his broken wrist in a cast. And remember, there is no internet there to Google how to stitch a bleeding man. There was another thing that was worrying me. How would I cope living in such close proximity with 20 strangers, my teammates, with no place to hide, no privacy, no cabins, not even beds. And instead of a toilet door, we had a zip down cloth that was neither soundproof nor smell proof. Would I go mad? But all our worries became irrelevant the moment we set sail. All of a sudden, it didn't matter that we didn't see land anymore. The 70-foot yacht became our entire world. When we would be on deck, it didn't feel crowded anymore. Our home was the whole of the ocean. 
the horizon felt infinite. We learned to function with little rest, and we would sleep nearly everywhere, out of exhaustion mainly. One of the things that I remember the most from this journey would be the extremes of temperatures. On the one hand, the freezing cold in the Southern Ocean. When it reached four degrees, we even had to have a dedicated iceberg lookout, just in case. We felt the cold wind blowing on our faces and the rain would hit us with such force that it would hurt our eyes and we had to wear ski goggles to be able to see where we were going. The waves kept splashing us with freezing cold water and nothing could keep us warm, nothing. Not even the seven layers of waterproof clothing I was wearing. Our knuckles will turn white from holding the helm so tight, trying to control the boat under such conditions. And on the other extreme, of course, let me not underestimate the difficulties of sailing under scorching heat while crossing the equator. Even our computer system melted, resulting in us trying to find our way using the traditional chart methods. Now, that was fun. But all the difficulties we faced were a very small price to pay. The magical sunset made it all worth it. Riding those incredibly tall and long waves was far from scary. It was exhilarating, it was liberating, it was real adventure. When you'd be on the crest of the wave, you could see for miles. The whole world felt yours. And then the boat will start riding down those waves with an increasing speed, and it will give you such an adrenaline rush. And then the boat would just graciously slow down and sit in the trough in between the waves before it gets picked up again. And you would look back behind to marvel at the picture of a wall of water towering above you, two houses high, maybe more and you'd be unable to grasp the power of the sea. And then there will be those moments while sailing through the most remote areas of the planet that we would come across some wildlife. There is something magical that happens when you connect with another creature while in the middle of nowhere. I will never forget the sight of hundreds of dolphins appearing out of nowhere, followed us for a bit before they disappeared again back in the sea. Or how lucky we felt having whales breaching right next to us. The seals that tried chatting with us with a little coughing sound. And of course, let me not forget the sight of one of the most incredible creatures of this planet found only in remote areas, the albatrosses of the Southern Ocean. Those magnificent birds with the largest wingspan would follow us, sometimes for days, as if they, too, needed some company. Brave or mad, I hope you made up your mind by now, but sailing from London to Australia was the best decision I have ever made. I discovered the world, myself, and the endless potential we humans have. It was an adventure of a lifetime. My life, though, hadn't always been so exciting. Many people have asked me, how come you decided to join this race? The question that would normally follow this would be, are you crazy? Um, I would try to evade the real answer by giving more generic reasons, like I was having a hard time at work, um, I needed an adventure, I needed a break, things like that. And even though these things are true, uh, I did leave my job in the end, they were not the real reasons. You see, about four years ago, my sister got diagnosed with cancer. The word that everyone is dreading. This may sound odd to you, but while my sister was ill, I made a conscious effort to live my life a little bit more. Why? There was this constant voice at the back of my head that kept repeating. It could have been you. It could have been you could have been you. What if I was the one that was given a six months to live? What if I was the one that had to face my mortality? 
I literally forced myself to live every second. Of course, all my energy quickly disappeared. When I lost her, I lost a piece of me as well. The fun, adventurous, energetic memnia was gone too. I all of a sudden could not find a reason to live. I really, really couldn't. I did not want to go out anymore. I had no interest in meeting new people. I didn't feel like contributing. Nothing was funny anymore. And I would feel guilty every time I would come even remotely close to enjoying myself. At the same time in my life, I had invested myself in a relationship that even though it was supportive in some ways, it was also damaging me emotionally in many other ways. Essentially, I had accepted the dysfunctional relationship out of fear that I would have to face all the rest alone. I gradually started doubting myself. I knew that losing my sister had changed me. But could this really be the new me? You see, every human being shares two primary fears. The fear that we are not enough and the fear that we won't be loved. And those fears were my reality. And so I left and I fell deeper and deeper in depression. I had completely lost myself. I had no faith in me anymore, no sense of worthiness. While I was on this downward spiral, I kept hitting roadblocks. Nothing that I had tried worked. I really could not see the end of the tunnel. That's when I knew that something drastic had to happen. I needed something big to shake up the whole of my existence. The poster advertising Clipper came into my life at the right time. Without thinking about it too much, I applied, admittedly not realizing where I was getting myself into. But essentially, the moment I took the decision to send that application form, I was also making a promise to myself that I will not give up on me and that from now on, I'll start saying yes to life. In the end, I had to lose everything to find myself again. The more I became one with nature, with the boat, with the sea, with the wind, the more the everyday annoyances and all that was troubling me started disappearing. Sailing was curing me. I felt the oceans cleansing my spirit and I embraced the newfound feeling of inner well-being that very few feel on land. I very quickly realized how few things we need to be happy in life. Nice weather, good company, nice music, and the smell of freshly baked bread when you're starving. My big achievement made me appreciate the small things in life. A smile when you're down, a tight hug when you need it the most, a nice word when things go wrong. While getting buttered by the elements in cold, unfriendly oceans, I grew stronger, I regained faith in me, and I learned to play full out, to give my 100% in whatever I did. I had found my lost passion for life again. I became fearless. And I learned that it's all about the people you surround yourselves with. The same journey would have been a totally different experience with a different crew. We very often allow too many critics in our lives, but the critics are not the ones writing your life. You are. When I stepped into that cruel location room, I all of a sudden found 700 like-minded people who shared the same kind of crazy like I did. 700 people, most of whom had been through some tough times themselves, that's why they were there and I finally felt that I belonged. Never underestimate the power of feeling of belonging and feeling understood. Surround yourselves with people who encourage you, people who have faith in you when you struggle having faith in yourselves, people who love you enough to allow space for your mistakes until you learn better, 
people who appreciate you. Because when people feel appreciated, they will always do more than expected. I learned that we're capable of a lot more things than what we give ourselves credit for. The oldest lady in my team is 74 years old. If that's not an inspiration, then I don't know what is. And if you find yourself going through some tough times in life and perhaps you feel a bit depressed, then act on it. I'm not saying you should all live on a sailing boat. Surely what I did is not for everybody. But if you find yourself stuck in a dark place, then challenge your fears. Your fear you might lose your job. Your fear you'll end up alone. Your fears are what's keeping you back. Don't stay where you're merely tolerated. Go where you're celebrated. And if you only have to remember one thing from this talk, then please remember this. If you ever feel so low in life and perhaps a bit re depressed, then please remember, you have not been buried. You've been planted to grow into your best selves. The worst times of your lives can lead to the best times of your lives. And I am the living example of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.